In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome to Under the Call of MS. This is a special Green Lantern episode. I'm going through some of my old comics and I had a stack of Green Lanterns. So I checked out the ones I decided to keep. I read a few and I want to read more, but I'm wait gonna wait till I pick up a couple issues I'm missing. Uh the first one I checked out was Green Lantern number 63 from September of 1968. Has the world ceased to exist or have I? Hal Jordan is out visiting his brother Jim, his wife Sue, and their son Howie for Howie's first birthday. When Hal blows out Howie's birthday candle, he suddenly finds himself transported to a black void where a booming voice tells him he must stop. Gracious. Or the human race is doomed. Hal finds himself on what appears to be a decimated planet Earth and changes into Green Lantern, deciding to... To call in some of his fellow Green Lanterns, he is shocked to learn that his power ring summons, that his power ring informs him that they have all vanished. Deciding to go to see the Guardians on the planet Oa, Green Lantern notices that some of the star clusters look different, and is shocked to find that the Oa does not exist. he suddenly sees a phantom image of a little girl playing jump rope, telling him to go back to Earth. She sings this little song that tells him what he needs to hear while she's envisioning him. There he finds a woman who is being attacked by a creature made out of yellow gas. With his power ring useless against them, because Green Lantern can't, his ring can't uh, be used against anything that's yellow. So yellow can break through his ring's power. But Green Lantern fights them off with his bare hands before sealing the cracks they came from with his power ring. He revives the girl and learns that her name is Tierra, and learns that she is the daughter of Gracious, the being he has come to stop. Telling her of his mission, Tierra tries to convince Hal that her father is a good man and takes him to their ship. There, Gracious tells Hal that they are from the planet Ort. He tells Hal how Earth has was attacked and seeded with the gas creatures from alien attackers and that he has come here to stop them. When Tierra tries to get her father to tell the truth, he silences her. Here's her father there. Interrupting his daughter from telling Hal any truthful information. Hale, catching the lie, attacks Gracious and forces him to tell the truth. Gracious tells of a war between the planets Ort and Troll. He tried to make the two warring worlds learn peace. However, they rejected this notion and, disgusted, Gracious fled in a ship with his daughter to find a new world, landing on Earth. He would scan the planet's future and find that it too would eventually spawn a race of beings that would constantly be in conflict. Gracious would then decide to not let this come to pass by preventing the human race from ever existing. When he tries to hypnotize Hal into doing his bidding, Hal manages to shake control 
uh, it should say shake it off, thanks to the appearance of the apparition of the little girl jumping rope. Hal then engages in a battle against Gracious that takes two, the two into space for Hal battles the would-be conqueror in his flying saucer. During the fight, Gracious' ship is severely damaged and Gracious is mortally wounded. Green Lantern takes Gracious back to Earth to spend his final moments with his daughter. He dies telling Green Lantern that he is a fool to think that humanity can ever find peace. Start. I <laughs> kind of agree. Uh, Green Lantern then sends Tara back to Ort before returning to his own time period. Later, Green Lantern travels to visit the Guardians of the Universe to tell them what happened, and they inform him that they had sent him to the past secretly and that their only means of communicating to Hal in the past was using a modern day Earth girl who unknowingly had the ability to subconsciously send messages into the past. This is a lot of fun. I really like this issue. Uh, I have been enjoying most of the Green Lantern issues that I've been coming across. But this one just... It had its own fun story that just basically was perfectly fine for just this issue. You don't have to worry about the issue before it, issue after it. This worked out perfectly as is. And it's just, yeah, very well done. I enjoyed that a lot. Next up, we go to the 90s. Went from the 60s to the 90s. Two decent eras. <laughs> uh, I don't have issue one. I got to find that one eventually. I actually did just find it on a site for cheap. I didn't realize I could get it that cheap, so I'm happy to see that. But, yeah, Green Lantern, number two, five. I'm missing number one and number six. But this is Pursuit of Happiness, Part two of eight, guest starring Green Lantern Guy Gardner and Green Lantern John Stewart. Story by Gerard Jones, art by Pat Broderick and Bruce Patterson. Hell continues to try and find a place in the world that doesn't include him, being the Green Lantern. Meanwhile, Guy Gardner comes face to face with the Tattoo Man, and he just might need Jordan's help, plus John Stewart's journey to Oa takes an unexpected turn. I uh, enjoyed these. I'm not big on Guy Gardner. I think it's mainly because of the bull haircut. <laughs> I hate that <laughs> haircut of his. And I mean, he is a dick. <laughs> he just, he's more for himself than anybody else. And Kind of keeps messing with hell along the way. And then some towns end up disappearing. Big chunks of towns. Because uh, John Stewart is kidnapped by one of the Oa Guardians. And the Oa Guardians using John Stewart's powers to find some places he's been throughout the universe and taking towns and parts of those places and bringing them to the old home planet and building himself a little menagerie of environments that he's been to. And a lot of them have to some type of representation with Hal Jordan from where Hal's been in the past. And somehow this, a character just has memories of it or was with Hal at certain points or something like that, but that's why he wants these environments. Here's the character there. But I only read up to issue five because I did not want to go further until I get number six, which obviously, is a lot. obviously yeah, I can't speak now. Obviously on this site I can get 
Number one and number six for a decent price. I will pick those up and get them in my collection, and then I can finish reading the story happily and not have to be missing out. But you got John Stewart, Stuart Guy Gardner, Hal Jordan, the Oa character, apparently a bunch of little minions coming their way. And Green Lantern 8. Looks like it's finishing off that part of the storyline. And then I really want to get to this part of the storyline. But like I said, I want to fill in the couple I'm missing. But this is Guy Gardner and his Nort. Nort. This is a little Green Lantern dog type character, which I've always wanted to know more about. I've seen him in a couple things where they had a lot of the Green Lantern characters involved in the storyline. But I don't know nothing about him, and I definitely want to find out more about that character, but we got issue 10 11 and 12, which looks like it finishes off the Nort run. So I'm happy I at least got those. And then number 26 Looks like Starry or Starlings. Starling has a bunch of minions attacking Hal in that one. But until I get the filler, I'm going to hold off on the rest of this series. But I just thought I'd give it a shout out. Yeah, this is a. The Nort run is a four part series, so I have 9, 10, 11, and 12, so that's cool. I can read all. All of that run, run at least, but I'm still going to wait till I get number six. Number one. <laughs> See what happens with those, but I really enjoyed it. And like I said, this is the 1968 one was a blast that it was just a nice single storyline. And I wasn't bummed out that I was missing out on some stuff, so. Check those out if you want, if you can find them. <laughs> and you can get, my comic shop has all the 1990 run. It looks like they have almost every issue available. So it's a good place to buy. I like using my comic shop when I find oddball issues. They're good about it. You can usually get some package deals. And I like how they have the different, uh, fine very fine mint good condition comics to choose from and you so you have the different pricing on them instead of just paying whatever price they're asking and it comes from ebay or amazon and you get what you get and you sometimes get a comic that's the bindings all busted to crap or there's a tire in a page or something like that you paid mint price prices or near mint price prices and you get something that's in acceptable condition that can suck but then you can be like me that actually tells you the condition and the little jackasses on ebay that get the item once they get it they sit there and complain to ebay oh it's not in the condition i was told uh, <laughs> i sit there and send it <laughs> the thing right the picture of the screen right to ebay showing that it says can have tears rips rusted uh staples whatever and you see the uh pictures of what it, the comic front and back looks like at least you can click on the pictures and see if there's anything wrong there and usually if it's something they're bitching about it's something you can see clearly in the picture but ebay stands by the buyer and doesn't give a shit about the sellers even though we're the ones that they profit off of but it's just messed up so we're all always responsible to either give another copy which they think we have millions of copies of stuff but we're selling single items and uh we're not like amazon we're 
you know, not happy with your purchase, they'll send you another one. Uh, we just have what we have that we list, and if you don't like it or your post office loses it or it gets destroyed, then it's gone. There's not much I can do. But I don't really have nothing oddball to throw on here. This is just a quickie, I guess. But I, I want to do uh, videos of certain runs of comics. I know I got a pile of Guardians of the Galaxy out there I'll be doing here pretty soon. A bunch of other big comic characters that I have quite a few issues of that I can make into a nice little video stack. So we will do that in the future. Also, but keep checking out Crimson Cull Comic Club, Under the Cull, Under the Cull of MS, AB Conversation, CrimsonCull.com. If you want to join up on our Saturday comic review group podcast, we do it on Saturdays from basically around 4 p.m. Central Time till we're done, which is usually a couple hours. And if you are interested in doing that, just join our Crimson Call Comic Club Facebook page. And you can, you'll get the links to, the Zoom link to click on on Saturday if you want to join up. Just tell us if you're going to be on and if you have any comics you want to review. We usually review anywhere up to three comics a person. And they don't have to be new. They don't have to be old. They can be whatever comics you want to review. We're fine with that. And just no sh no dickheaded shenanigans. We're just, we all get along. So, if you can get along with everybody else, you're welcome to join in. Check it out. Other than that, be good to yourself. Be good to everybody else. And we'll get back to you guys soon. Back to you again. Back to you again soon.